Hey, what's up? Jason here from unity3d.college. Today we're going to talk about the observer pattern. Now, the observer pattern is one where we have subjects that have a list of dependent properties or objects that are observing what happens with this subject, and then the subject automatically notifies those observers of changes. A really common use for this is UI stuff, so we'll have a UI element, and we want that UI element to automatically update whenever the data behind it changes. And we see this a lot in games and in non-game programs, but today we're going to focus on a very game-specific example of how you can use the observer pattern to separate out your code and make your project just a lot better in general. Now, if you're following along with the Game Programming Patterns book, the observer pattern example that he gives, which is, I think, a really great one, is an achievement system. So we have things that happen throughout our game, and then we want to bolt on an achievement system. We want to be able to say, hey, when the player reaches this point or gets this many kills, unlock some achievement. And it could just be a local achievement system. It could be something like uh, the Steam achievement system, where we're sending up achievements and they're getting some extra Steam rewards and then things are popping up on their screen. Either way, it's a pretty simple system to build in, but we want to make sure that it's really segregated out. We want to make sure that it's not intertwined with our game code. I mean, we don't want to have whenever a player dies, we call into the achievement system and say, hey, achievement system, a player died. You know, we don't we don't want to have those direct connections or if they unlocked a thing, we don't we don't want that code getting mixed up into our game logic code. So we use the observer pattern to really separate that out and make it nice and simple. Now let's dive into an example. So we've got a scene set up right here. I've got a bull, and then we've got three little objects and an achievement system. Before I, well, let's, let's just run through, let's play it, and then I'll, we'll look at the code, see how it works, and then I'll show you how to set it up in a much cleaner way. So here we go, we've got the game running, and if I run up and hit this sphere with my bowl, you'll see we unlock the ball, and I believe this will unlock a cube or a box, yep. and then this one unlocks a capsule. And if I hit them again, nothing happens the second time. So let's take a look at the code. Let's see how this is all working, and then again, we'll dive into a better example right after that. So let's see, we'll go into the project folder, and then the script is right here. We're going to start with this observer script. So the basic setup for an observer and subject or the observable pattern is that we have some sort of an observer that reacts when it's notified. So it can be notified. Essentially, we have this class and we say that whatever is an observer must implement the on notify method. Because this is abstract, we can't just create a new observer. We'd have something like our achievement system that's an observer, and you'll see that in just a moment. The other part of this is a subject, or the thing that's being observed. And you see here that it has a list of observers. We have a register observer method that adds the observer to that list. And then we have a notify method. In fact, why is that so small? Let's make it nice and big. So we have that list, we're registering, we're adding the observer when we pass in an observer, and then we have a notify method. And this notify method loops through all the observers, calls on notify, passes in the value that it gets, and the notification type. All relatively simple. There's not, not a whole lot to the system in general, and it's gonna get even simpler once we go a little bit further. So how do we implement these two things? So let's take a look at the observer. For the observer, we have our achievement system. So our achievement system, the base class is observer. And then we implement the start. And here we're just clearing out the player preps. You'll see why in a minute. It's just when we start, I want to reset those unlocks. And then we're looping through all of the points of interest that are in the scene and registering this as an observer. Now I put a comment here to note that you probably wouldn't do this necessarily in the achievement system if you were going this route. You might want to go in when you spawn the POI, say, hey, also, whenever whatever thing happens, go, um, go notify the achievement system. But for this, just to keep it simple as my not perfect example, we're looping through all of them and registering this. So that means that whenever the point of interest calls its notify, our observer will be registered and on notify will get called. Then when on notify does get called, we'll see how that works in just a moment, we uh, check the notification type, make sure it's this achievement unlocked one. We get a key, which is just a string. We're taking achievement plus the value of whatever this is and turning it to a string. And then we're setting a player pref to 
one if it's not set. So that's right here. So if if it's already set, we just don't do anything. If it isn't set yet, we set it to one and then we log in there that it's unlocked. And then somewhere after that is when we would do our Steam achievements or whatever system we're using, you know, a call out to their API to say that, hey, the player has unlocked it. And here we've got this notification type. There's only one entry right now, but you can imagine there could be multiple entry types here. Now, before we go on to the next type, I do wanna show the subject here. So that is our point of interest. So our point of interest is using the subject base class. Remember, these are both abstract classes, subject and observer. We never implement, or we never create a new one of those. We just have base or subclasses that use these. So our point of interest has an on trigger enter because this is a mono behavior. Remember, subject is a mono behavior as a base class. And then on trigger enter, we just notify that, hey, whatever this POI name is, that achievement was unlocked. So that's how that's working. We go in here. Here, let's uh, make this a little bit more interesting. Let's actually just debug and step through it. So if anybody doesn't know what I'm doing here, I've hit play in there. We're gonna go hit attach to Unity in Visual Studio. You can do this in uh, Mono Develop as well. So now we should be attached any second. It usually takes just a second, depending on the size of the project, to go through that. And I'm gonna put a breakpoint right here. And um, I think that's it. Yep. So then I'll run over here. And then what, what should happen is we should get kicked over to the code. There we go, we entered the trigger and now notify is being called. The POI name is this, the A ball, and we have the notification types. Now if I hit F11 and step in, let's just get rid of all of this. We don't need all this stuff here. Clear all this out so it's a little easier to see. So we go into that subjects notify. Remember we're going into the base classes notify method. And then if we look here, we have one observer, just put the mouse over, you can see it, and it's that achievement system. So when I step over, 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 and into, so I'm gonna hit F11, and it should call into the observers, or the achievement systems notify, there we go, and then you'll see that this is how the code's getting called. So then we're setting the thing and marking that as unlocked. So this is kind of the whole stack of where it's going in. The subject says, hey, something has changed, observer, go deal with it. So this system works. Um, it's not ideal though in a C Sharp or Unity sense because it does have some serious drawbacks. The first one being that we have to use this observer and subject base class or we have to re-implement all of this stuff in here. Now we could get around that with maybe an interface and then re-implementing it, but I still don't like the idea of putting all of this boilerplate code in multiple places. And I don't really like the idea of needing a base class for all of these observable things and the observers themselves, if I don't necessarily need it. Now there may be a good framework that you use that does this for you and you use a base class for it. And that could totally make sense. I just wouldn't recommend building one from scratch like this yourself. So instead, what I like to do is go with version two here. So let's go into my scenes folder and we have V2 and you see it's named events. And that's because C Sharp kind of builds this observer pattern into the language itself with the eventing system. In fact, there are even observable collections of things. So you can have a collection that you get notified whenever it changes. We're not gonna go quite that far. We're just gonna go into the events and building this out with events. But there's a lot in there that you can do that just with the language that just isn't available in a lot of older languages or at least wasn't previously. Okay, so let's take a look at this. We have our V2 version. And you see everything looks pretty much the same. It's green and we've got the bull and the three guys again. But our achievement system is now achievement system with events. So it's a different script here. And then our objects, our points of interest are also point of interest with events. So how does this work differently? Let's, let's take a look. First, I'm just gonna open up the POI with events. And the number one, first most important thing I wanna point out is that the base class is now mono behavior. We're no longer using the subject base class because we don't really need it. Instead, what we're using is an event. And here, if you look at line six, we have a public static event, and it's an action of type point of interest with events. So that's essentially this class type right here. And it's named on point of interest enter. So you might be wondering what the hell is this? If you've never used events, never used static events or actions, it might not make any sense at all. But what this is essentially is an event that we can put onto this type, this point of interest with events, and register for without having a specific object 
instance. So if we didn't have the static keyword here, we'd have to find this point of interest. We'd have to figure out each point of interest there. Oh, I'm attached so I can delete. There we go. So we'd have to find them all, kind of like we do in the achievement system with this find objects of type and go through and register for them all. What I like to do instead in this case, and not, not for all observable stuff, but for especially things like achievement systems, is make these static so that we don't need a reference to it. And then you'll see why in just a moment. In our new point of interest system, we'll be able to register for all points of interest without having to do any... Um, any finding of the points of interest. We don't have to know what the points of interest are. We just have to know that there's a, an event here that gets called. And how does it get called? Well, let's take a look. If we look at on trigger enter, you see that here we just check to see if point uh, on point of interest entered is not equal to null, then we call it. And it's a static method on this class. So again, it's going to call that one and we're going to pass in our point of interest. That's why we have this parameter here for this action. Now this action could of course be something else as the parameter type. It doesn't have to be the class. It could be something like a string and for our call to it, instead of calling, passing in this, because this is a point of interest, not a string, we could pass in something like this dot POI name and just pass the string name for our event instead of the full object. That's just not how I have it set up for this one, just because I wanted to pass the full object, but it does work fine. Like, don't think that you have to pass the full class in one of these events. So how is this used? How are we registering it in our achievement system? Well, let's select it and I'm going to hit Shift F12 to find all references. Let's just drag it up right here. And you'll see that right here on this one, we're registering in our achievement system with events. So let's go to that. Take a look here in our start. Again, we delete all player prefs just so that these are all cleared out and reset. And then we call point of interest with events. Remember, this is the class name or the class type. That's why it's got that blue right there in the nice capital P. And then here's our event and we say plus equals and then the method name. Now the method name needs to have the same parameters as the action here. So right now we have point of interest with events and that matches this. If I change this to a string or something and maybe did like this dot POI name and go back, you'll see that we're going to get an error. Well, once it, there we go. Now we have an error saying that this doesn't match. Now I could change this around. Right. right now I'm passing in the point of interest. Let's just change it. Let's make it string. And this could be POI and I'm gonna hit F2 and rename it to POI name. And then we could get rid of that and get rid of that. And now we have an event in our observable system that just passes in the POI name. And the thing I like about this the most, uh, uh, well I say the second most, outside of not having to have that base class, is that I don't have to pass around some sort of an enum for a message type or a string or anything like that because these events are all now registered based on what they are. So I have an event for when a point of interest is entered. I could also have an event for when I've killed an enemy. And then in my achievement system here, I could just register for something like player dot on killed enemy plus equals, and then here have another method that just does an achievement for killing an enemy. I can even make this more generic and have you know a very simple one that they're all calling into the same method if I wanted to. Probably wouldn't though, because I probably want to do slightly different things based on the different types of achievements that are unlocked. Uh, if I kill an enemy, I may want to increment some counter and keep track and then unlock an achievement at a certain point. But I think the, the biggest benefit that I'm getting here is that this code has zero coupling with my player or with my point of interest. My point of interest doesn't give a damn if I have an achievement system. It, the achievement system could be pulled out, could be swapped, it could just be totally removed. It wouldn't matter, it wouldn't break the game, it wouldn't impact it. And I can change the way the achievement system works without impacting the game at all as well. And if I have enough of these hooks in my game, so if like a point of interest entered, a thing died, something's health changed, whatever, I can register for just about any of those. And if I need to add in a new thing for a new achievement, I can just put in a, an event in there and then call that event whenever it's needed. And again, not couple in my achievement code. Now, if you're worried about performance, um, it could be an issue if you're calling some event too often. So if you're like every frame, you're firing off this event that, hey, this, this thing changed, this thing changed, this thing changed, this thing changed. It, it can add up, it can, it can be a problem. So you definitely wanna profile it. 
But in a situation like this, um, it's not going to be an issue, right? Unless you did something bad in your code. You're probably not doing these actions that unlock achievements that often. And again, if it's not in some hot path of code where it's just every frame, it's really not going to be an issue. And you're going to get the big benefit of just really separated code and the ability to bolt on other things. So I've got the achievement system in here, caring about on point of interest entered. What if I want to play a sound? I can just have a class that listens for on POI entered and then plays sounds whenever a POI is entered. It could play a sound based on what the POI is. It could just be a generic sound. It could be based on any other thing. We could show a UI element. We could do whatever we want whenever this POI is entered. We don't just have to register one event. This plus equals just means that, hey, whenever this does it, or whenever this fires, do this thing in addition to whatever other things that you want to do. Now that's also important because in our achievement system, it's not going to matter much, but in a in another context where we have a thing that is listening and cares about stuff, but then eventually stops caring about things, maybe we've loaded a new level or something else has changed so that we don't want to get called when that event gets fired. Or maybe even it's a thing that got destroyed, like our achievement system is there and then we destroy it halfway through the game. It'd be weird, but you know, it's just an example of a way that you could end up with an issue and that issue is that our event could be registered to something that's not really around anymore and it's going to make this thing linger it's going to make it not go away it's going to cause problems so what we want to do instead is when we're destroying something that's registered for an event like this so we do on destroy we want to say minus equals here so i copy that paste it here and i change this to a minus and this is going to unregister this callback so now when point of interest is entered, it'll no longer call into this object. In fact, if we do it without, let's just, let's comment that out. Let's save, let's go in here and just show the issue just to make sure that it's really clear what the problem could be if, you're not, if you're not careful and you don't deregister your events. So we hit play and then we delete the achievement system and we run over here and you see that we're still getting calls to this. So our unlocked ball is still getting fired. That method is still around. It's still ha happening, even though that thing has been destroyed because it's not actually able to completely go away. So make sure you unregister your events. You could also end up with null references, all kinds of errors if you don't unregister them. But don't let that distract you or keep you from using the observable pattern. It's an amazing pattern. It'll definitely simplify your code. And again, not just with achievements, but UI, gameplay, all kinds of stuff. It's really, really helpful, really useful, and probably the one that I use the most out of all patterns just in game development in general. Anyway, I hope this is helpful for you. If you have questions about observable pattern or observer patterns, or if you want to know more about events, or maybe um, you'd be interested in the observable collection stuff and just kind of learning a little bit more about that, just let me know and I'll possibly dive in a little bit deeper on this stuff. And then I also plan to continue just going through these game programming patterns. So make sure that you like and that you're subscribed and getting all the updates. And thanks for watching. Keep coding.